Hi, good evening. Happy midweek service. Happy Wednesday to everyone. For tonight, we will talk about His Church, the Church of uh, Jesus Christ. We are the Church, obviously. See, the Church is not the building or the structure, but the assembly of Christ's followers, us, you and I. Jesus, obviously, is the head of the church. We are his body. It's when Jesus ascended, we became his hands, feet, and mouth, representing him to the world as his body. You see, there are two kinds of people uh, dito sa mundo na to, here on earth. The believer and the unbeliever. Those people who believe in God and those people who doesn't believe in God. As simple as that. The question is, as believers of Christ, how do we represent Christ to those who doesn't believe in Christ? One of the greatest attractions, siguro, to Christianity, tayon. We are the greatest attractions to Christianity. Ang tawag sa atin, Christians. Follower ni Vilma, Vilmanians. Follower ni Nora, Noranians. Follower tayo ni Jesus, we're Christians. But we are also, obviously, one of the greatest hindrances. Why people doesn't want to go to church? Why people doesn't want to believe in God? Why people, you know, because they see something in us na, you know, not worth my time. Kumbaga. How we behave as a church impacts the people around us. We either turn people to Jesus or turn them away. Last Friday, our church had a general assembly together with all the leaders, all the members, all the attendees. I had a great time, you know, catching up and kamustan uh, and uh, the best thing that ha that happened is after this uh, COVID, we have this kumbaga, optimism. Now, as a church, we will move forward. Now, while we are here due to the pandemic, we will be working together. We will continue to plan. We will continue to pursue. We will continue to be offensive for Christ. But, um, offensive in a sense that take offense. In a sense that not offend anybody. I'm sorry. But to, kumbaga, instead of you know, playing defense, it's like in the basketball, we we'll go for more um, offensive statistics. When our family actually, friends, uh, workmates, classmates, and all other people we engage with find Christ in our life, no matter how difficult it is, at first for them to come to Christ, sooner or later, they will follow Him because of our Christ-like witness. Kaya excited kami as a church to witness while we are, you know, nasa pandemic tayo, to witness lalo na after na maging COVID-19 free na ang buong mundo. And we all go back to church to worship. Excited lahat. At the same time, excited mag-invite ng mga tao. New souls for God. It's harvest time. Ika nga. Sabi natin kanina, there are two kinds of people um, person sa mundo na to, yung naniniwala at hindi naniniwala, believer and unbeliever. Pero alam niyo ba that there are also three kinds of people inside the church. So from believers, okay, tingnan natin yung tatlong klase ng believers na nagpupunta sa church. Okay, number one, yung attendees. Yung attendee, uh, a person who attends the church every Sunday, um, but is not considered as a member. Number two, your member is an attendee, both an attendee at the same time, filed for membership. How to be a member officially of a church? So simply lang naman yun. You, you, you just, you know, follow simple uh, requirements like, um, obviously, uh, you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You know, uh, willingly, uh, gusto mo mag-abide by the rules in church. Um, 
importante yung magkaroon ka ng membership class para maintindihan mo yung sistema ng church, yung tinatawag na uh, tenets of faith, yung mga tinatawag na uh, you know, basic doctrines of the church kasi kailangan pare-parehas. So, uh, a member also <coughs> is uh, naiintindihan niya yung tithing, naiintindihan niya yung love offering, na no? kumbaga, at uh, saka consistently nandun siya every Sunday, consistently uh, he or she works with the uh, pastoral staff and all other church leaders. So, sino naman yung workers? So, we have the attendees, those people na umaaten, yung mga members, those people na hindi lang umaaten, but officially part of the church. Ay, yung mga workers, attendees sila, members sila, at the same time, they are working with the church staff. They are working, kumbaga, kumbaga uh, sa colony, mga worker bees to. No, they are, vol- pwede silang volunteers, pwede silang paid staff. So, ito yung uh, mansured enough to minister to other uh, attendees and uh, members. <clears throat> so, sabi natin nila, there are two kinds of people sa mundo na to, naniniwala at hindi naniniwala. Bakit importante natin pag-usapan yun? Kasi, ang tindi natin mabuti, yung kinuwento ni Paul sa Romans chapter 12, o yung tinatawag na the Romans 12 church, o in other words, yung ating topic ngayon, His church. Let's open our Bible sa Romans chapter 12. It's about a living sacrifice in first part. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is a true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing, and perfect will. Humble service in the body of Christ. In first part, he is trying to encourage the body of Christ in Rome. And uh, uh, it is a second part na to. Kumbaga, he emphasizes your humble service in the body of Christ. In verse 3, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, Paul talk about love being in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Lacking in zeal, I'm sorry, honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. 
do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone for evil. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for your message. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us who we are. We are the church, your church, your bride. You are the groom. And someday there will be a beautiful wedding and there will be a beautiful uh, reunion with the groom and the bride. Thank you, Lord God, for choosing us. Thank you, Lord God, for being our God. May your people learn tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And you put the book of Romans chapter 12 describes a consecrated church, his church, not anybody's church, not my church, not anybody's pastor's church, not anybody's priest's church, his church. The Apostle Paul appeals to the church to be pleasing to God in view of what God has done for them. Belief precedes behavior. Kaya naman panay ang encourage ni Paul. Alam niyo, someday I want to be like Paul. I want to encourage people who are serving the Lord. I want to go somewhere in places while I'm still young, travel and you know, try to encourage all the pastors and leaders of other churches from from Southeast Asia to Europe to to America to to Middle East, wherever Filipino churches are there, punta tayo dun. Sarap siguro, no? Gawin yung ginagawa ni Paul. We have according to our uh, we behave according to our belief. Obviously, kapag what we believe, yun yung lalabas sa behavior natin, yun yung magmamanifest. If you do not understand God's mercies, we will not consecrate our life to Him. According to the Bible, so binasa natin, we are all sinners. The only payment for sin is death. Eternal separation from God, but, but by His mercies, He provided the solution to our problem to a great cost. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so we may be reconciled with God. There are two kinds of people, unbeliever and believer. There are three kinds of people in the church, not believers. Attendees, members, and workers. Wait, possible pala yung attendees, hindi pa believers. Nag-attend lang siya. But focusing on the believer, no? base doon sa binasa natin na, na Romans chapter 12, church or his church, no? himay-himayin natin, ano yung na-observe ko doon sa loob ng simbahan? sa tinagal-tagal ko na sa ministeryo. This is just my observation. And uh, napansin ko, there are two types of believers. Number one, yung tinatawag na EGR. O sabi nga ni Pastor Rick Warren, extra grace required. Yan. Kaya pagka, pagka nakasalamuha mo sila, kailangan mo ng extra grace. Yan. Yung pangalawa, ito yung masarap kasama. Ito yung mga matured believers in Christ. Pag-usapan natin silang dalawa. Siguro magsimula tayo dun sa extra grace required na klase ng believer. Sa extra, extra grace required or EGR, meron akong na-identify na lima na napansin ko lang. No? Maraming totoo, maraming hindi. I don't know. Bahala na kayong mag, uh, mag, uh, mag-isip no? kung tama yung akin na-observe. Uh, napansin ko, 
doon sa EGR, sa Extra Grace Required Believers, merong mga superstars, merong mga hoppers, merong mga negamen, merong mga stingy, at may mga dividers. Isa-isay natin. Bakit natin pinag-uusapan to? Kasi we're trying to, kasi ang ganda na encouragement na pinasa natin, no? na nasulat ni Paul para sa para sa ating mga mga Kristiyano. Pero dapat natin maintindihan na tingnan natin yung kabilang perspektibo para makatulong sa mga believers na teka, na-identify ko ata yung sarili ko dito. Ah. Beke naman, pwede tayong magbago para kay Kristo. Baka naman, pwede naman tayo na you know, uh, humingi ng tulong sa Panginoon para baguhin ang puso natin. Kasi minsan, hindi natin nakikita. Let's, let's give a, an, uh, a bird's eye view no, sa lahat ng believers. Kung sakaling ma-identify mo yung sarili mo dito, eh, huwag akong sisihin mo. Humingi ka ng tawad sa Panginoon at subukan mo na Hingin sa kanya na, Lord, I want to be, I want to do better para sa iyo. Gusto kong, since nabanggit ni Pastor to, parang naka-identify ako. Gusto ko sana mabago mong puso ko. Sige, let's start. Identify natin yung mga EGRs. Simula tayo kay Superstar. No? Si Superstar, ito yung tipo na believer na may superiority complex. Yun, alam niya lahat kasi nga Superstar siya. No, know it all. It's all about him. It's not about Jesus. It's not about God. It's not about his teammates. It's not about his churchmates. It's not about the church. It's all about him, him, him. And the thing, akala niya, is giving God a favor. No? Ayaw niya madudumihan yung kamay niya. Kasi nga superstar siya. No dirty hands. Ayaw niyang gagawin yung mga ginagawa ng mga normal na tao sa simbahan. Ayaw niyang gagawin yung mga kung saan pwede siyang mapagod. Kumbaga, superstar siya. Lagi siya nakaupo at uh, nagsusupervise, supervise lang. Ito yung uh, self-proclaimed leader without a follower. Naalala ko, 20 years ago, meron ako na meet na isang batang pastor. Sabi ko sa kanya, tiyano ko siya, uh, saan ka nagpapastor? Ay, hindi po. Gagraduate pa lang ako sa Bible school. Sabi niya ganun. Ah, okay. So, hindi ka pa pastor. Ah, hindi. Pastor na ako, sabi niya. Ah, okay. Sabi ko. So, paano ka naging pastor? Na-ordain ka na ba? Uh, in-acknowledge ka ba ng church mo? Or are you leading a, a group or something, whatever? Ah, wala po. Kasi po, ako po ay nag-aaral sa Bible School. So, ako po ay pastor. Medyo, in-explain ko sa kanya na ang pagiging pastor from the word itself, eh, you are pastoring a flock. You are a shepherd, an earthly shepherd with followers. Follow, may followers ka na sheep. Okay? So, meron kang pinapastol. So, you cannot be a leader without a follower. Is the problem ni Superstar. A leader siya, pero wala siyang follower. Okay, let's move on. EGR number two, si Hopper. Nako, kilalang kilala niyo to. Madalas yung makita sa church. O minsan hindi yung makita sa church. Ito yung mga tao na walang commitment. Ang gusto nila, ang church committed sa kanila. Ang gusto nila, yung pastor committed sa kanila. Pero, wala silang commitment sa church. They thought na, na, na nagbibigay sila ng glory sa Panginoon. Pero honestly, you know, they are considered pagdating sa mga projects and everything. They don't want to do anything about it kasi tinataman sila. Ayaw lang nilang, ayaw lang nilang sumali. No? Kadalasan, si Hopper may nagagawang mali sa simbahan. So either may makakaaway na church members, church leaders, or whatever. May involved sa scandal or whatever. May excommunicate lilipat na kabilang church, may makakaaway, lilipat na kabilang church, may excommunicate, lilipat sa kabilang church. In other words, 
hopping from one church to another. Okay. Si EGR number three. Si Negaman. Nako, mahirap kasama to. Every day is doomsday para sa tao na to. Lagi na lang nangangamba. Lagi nagwa-worry. No? Eh, siya rin yung pastor's critic. Pati yung grammar ng pastor. Pati yung, pati yung pananamit ng pastor. Pati yung sapatos ng pastor. Pati yung anak ng pastor. Pati yung direksyon ng simbahan na, na, na nililid ng pastor. Lagi siyang nagkikriticize. Hindi to criticism para makabuo. Kung baga, criticism. Dahil nga, you know, this person eh kulang sa pananampalataya. Siya rin yung devil's advocate na what if kung ganito, what if kung ganyan. Siya rin yung false prophet na nagsasabi palagi na ganito ang mangyayari, ganito ang mangyayari, pero hindi naman nangyayari. At saka, no mercy. In a sense na uh, gusto niya siya makareceive ng mercy, pero hirap, nagmahirap siya magbigay ng mercy. Sino naman? Si EGR number four. Si EGR number four, si Stingy. No? In Pilipino, nako, barat. <laughs> siya yung mahilig mag-compare, siya yung mahilig mag-analyze, siya yung mahilig mag-demand. For the sake of wala lang, <laughs> siya yung last to give First to condemn. Siya yung self-proclaimed auditor ng church. Ah, saan ba napunta yung ganitong amount? Saan ba napunta yung ganito? Ah, magkano ba yung ginasas ng ganito? Pero, kadalasan si Stingy, hindi siya nagtatights or, you know, mas malaki pa yung tip sa restaurant. Parang tinitipan niya lang si Lord. We need to understand na ang tithing and love offering is not for the church. It's not for the pastor. Ito po ay form of worship mo sa Panginoon. Kung tama yung tithes mo, kung mali yung tithes mo, kung kulang, kung sobra, everything. Ang Lord ang magdi-decide how the Lord will bless you. Not the church, not the pastors. But actually, the tithes doesn't go to the pastors. Uh, the tithes goes to the church, all the projects, which includes part of it, probably salary or parsonage of the pastors, but these are all um, uh, expenses of the church. The problem is stingy. Hirap siyang magbigay, pero gusto niyang tumanggap. Bukas ang kamay sa pagtanggap, sarado sa pagbigay. Ito rin yung tao na hindi na nga nagbibigay or konting-konting binibigay, siya pa yung audit ng audit ng audit. Siya yung tanong ng tanong ng tanong. Siya yung compare ng compare ng compare. Siya yung analyze ng analyze ng analyze. Siya yung demand ng demand. Dapat may ganito tayo. Dapat ganito yung may resume tayo. At dapat yung resume natin ganito. Dapat ganyan. Dapat. So, siya yung mahilig magkatang. Hmm. Nakilala ba kayong ganun? Or baka naman, hindi mo napapansin. Nagiging ganun ka na. Kaya importante na baga let's put light doon sa darkness para makapag-reflect tayong lahat. At syempre, EGR number 5, si Divider. Sino naman to si Divider? Si Divider, simple lang. No? Lagi niyang buka bibig. Look at the other church. Mabuti pa yung church na yon. Mabuti pa yung church na to. No? In itong church na to, hindi kagaya nung dati kong church. Kasi doon sa dati kong church, here's the thing. Sabi niya, look at the other church. Look at the other church. Bakit malaya ka naman lumipat ka doon sa church na yun? Sabi niya, unlike my previous church, bakit yung church natin hindi ganito, hindi ganyan? Unlike my previous church. Here's the thing. Eh bakit ka umalis doon sa previous church at lumipat dito? The, the, the thing is, you're not trying to help. You're trying to divide the church. No? Or this is the type of person, si divider. Lagi siyang, wait, Teka, that's a good idea, but I have a better idea. Wait, teka, hindi um, maganda idea mo. My idea is better. I have a better idea palagi. Si Divider, he's a man of envy. He's willing to divide the group. He's willing to divide the church kapag things are not going on his way. 
kapag hindi siya napapaboran. He's a man after the devil's own heart. Kasi David, a man after God's own heart. Bakit? I'm not saying he's a devil or whatever, but the thing is, the heart of the devil is to always divide. If you are a person who always divide people, churches, organization, you are after a devil's own heart. So be very careful. Kalimutan na muna natin yan. Eh, mag-move on na tayo, sabi nga. Ulitin ko lang, review. There are two kinds of people here on earth. Those people who believe in God and those people who doesn't believe. Now, sa church, there are three kinds of people na nasa loob ng sipahan. Attendees, members, and workers. Sabi natin, sa believers na nasa loob ng simbahan, may dalawang klase rin. A GR, those people who needs extra grace required, we talked about it kasi para mablagyan natin ng liwanag yung dinim. Para makapag-reflect tayo. Teka, baka ganito na ako. Kailangan magbago-bago ng konti. Ano? Ito, mas masarap pag-usapan kasi ito yung, ito yung binanggit ni Paul. Eh. No? Ito, yung, ito yung mga members talaga, workers ng Romans 12 Church. And I hope no, sa mga simbahan natin, mas maraming ganito kesa sa mga HR um, church members. Let's start. No? At sino-sino naman itong mga matured na mga believers? No? Si founder, si enabler, si encourager, si giver, at si silent producer. Okay. Ito po ay yung mga napansin ko. I wrote this down. Wala po akong uh, tag nito. Whatever source. But the thing is, sinulat ko lang yun ang mga napansin ko sa dalawampung taon ng pagmiministeryo ko. Eh, I tried to identify no, yung Romans 12 Church. Sino-sino itong mga matured at sino-sino yung mga AGR. So, mag-focus na po tayo sa mga matured. Number one, si founder. Ay, nako. Favorite ko to. Si founder ay isang klase ng matured believer who's a builder. He is a history maker. Like Paul, he's a church planter. No? He has a lot of faith stories, not fake stories. Hindi yung mga hiniram lang na stories. Na-experience na talaga. Ay ni Paul, tinuka na ahas, na shipwreck, na gulpe. This person, rich in experience, rich in faith stories, no fake stories. Now, he's a diligent leader. And day by day, he walks with God. Si matured, number two, si enabler. Nako, ang sarap din kasama na ito. Kasi he gets things done with fun. Yeah. No? Uh, parang ang gaang gaang Sarap ka trabaho, sarap kasama sa ministry. Tapos result-oriented. May kitaan mo talaga na pag inumpisan, may resulta. At saka he loves to develop leaders around him. Hindi siya madamot. Kasi madaming leaders, sila lang gusto maging leaders forever. Dapat kalimutan natin nila na tatanda at manghihinda at mamatay din tayong lahat. Ay kailangan, bago mangyari yun, eh, responsibilidad natin to create a Joshua generation. The next team, the next generation of leaders, young people, that we need to develop for them to be ready as leaders. Hindi yung kailan ka mamamatay, saka ka mag-a-appoint. Or mag ka sa labas. Mas maganda, mag-groom ka ng tao sa loob na parang anak mo sa pananampalataya, i-disciple mo, at kawin mo base sa anointing ng Panginoon, i-prepare mo siya sa next leadership ng church. Si Matsurd number three, ako, si Encourager, ang sarap kasama rin ito. Bakit? Punong-puno lagi ng words of wisdom ang kanya mga labi. No? Hindi lang yung tipong kabisado niya yung Bible or kaya niya mag-quote ng maraming verses. Hindi. No? Kasi kahit naman wala kang wisdom, pwede mong gawin yun. Eh. Pwede kang magkabisado. Eh. Pero ito, yung tao na alam mo na binasa yung Bible, ninamnam, nilagay sa puso, pinamuhay, at paglabas sa mga labi, siguro, blessed na blessed ka. No? Si encourager, si Mr. Mr. or Miss Big Smile. Lagi mo siya nakita na hangiti. Bakit? Nag-raradjit kasi 
yung pag-ibig ng Diyos sa mukha niya. Ayan. Kasimbahan, imagine nyo, lahat ng tao nakasibangot, walang papasok. E imagine mo nga lang sa isang fast food, lahat nakasibangot, walang papasok. Simbahan pa kaya? Kaya we need to wear this big smile na, na talaga excited tayo na makita at makasama kung sino man mga tao no? at uh, mapakilala sa kanila si Kristo. So, si encourager, siya yung tipong merong never say die attitude. NSD, kumbaga, member ng Barangay Ginebra, never say die. Kumbaga, ipit na ipit na, wala ng pondo, pandemic na, ang gulo na, wala ng meeting, wala ng church. Alam mo yun? Tapos, na, ang hirap, internet na, ang internet na ang preaching, kailangan mag-adjust, kailangan maintindihan, kailangan malam. Pero ito yung klase ng tao, sarap kasama. Never say die. Kumbaga, go, go, go. Laban lang. He's a man of prophecy, si encourager, no? Alam niya yung prophetic ministry. No? Alam, niya yung, alam niya yung ramdam niya yung mangyayari kasi pasis sa sinabi ng Panginoon, pasis sa nabasa niya, pasis sa experience niya. Meron siyang magandang view sa future. Kumbaga visionary leader. At magaling na communicator. Importante yun. Kasi nasa puso mo man, hindi mo makommunicate, sayang. Di ba? Kaya masarap kasama si encourager. Number four. Si Matsuid, believer number four, si giver. Ayan, masarap din itong kasama sa church. Bakit? No, he gives time. Kapag may project nandyan, kapag may meeting nandyan, kapag may retreat nandyan, kapag ka poyatan nandyan, ay sarap. Kasi ang dami ko na nakasama ganito. He gives time, he gives money. No, hindi stingy. Maga, alam niya yung para sa Diyos. No, alam niya kung sino ang bibigyan, alam niya anong bibigyan, alam niya kung saan niya ilalabas ang resources ng Panginoon. He gives effort. Okay? He gives all his talent. Nakita mo to. Ito yung mga hopper in terms of ministry. From one ministry to another kasi gusto niya lahat ibigay kung ano meron siya para sa Panginoon. Hindi rin siya, ano eh, ito tipong not a give and tell. No? Kumbaga, alam niya yung ibig sabihin na yung sa kaliwang kamay, kanang kamay, hindi pinapaalam. Kasi ha, ang kanyang confidence na sa Panginoon, alam niya na nagbibigay siya sa Panginoon, hindi sa tao. He's a worshiper. Ang giver, worshiper. No? Kasi para sa kanya, giving is an act of worship. Ito naman, yung isa, Walang mercy. Ito, full of mercy. Napaka-merciful. Okay? Kilala niya si Aling Mercy. <laughs> Napaka-merciful. Na. Okay, number five. Si Matsuid, believer, number five, silent producer. Ay, ito naman. Ako ay hangang-hanga sa mga tao na to. Result-oriented. I love people na result-oriented. Ang aking background ay corporate So, pag wala kang result, wala kang sweldo. <laughs> or tanggal ka sa trabaho, or demoted ka. So, you need results. Kasi negosyo yun eh. How much more sa, 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 sa negosyo ng Panginoon? Ang pangangalap ng kaluluwa para sa kanya. No? Banat tayo ng banat, wala na marisulta. Sayang yung effort. Kailangan, pag banat, mayroong guidance ng Panginoon. Unang-una, kasi sinabi niya. Vision niya yun. Siya, na, siya ang inaangat siya ang may gusto, sa kanya ang resulta. Obviously, magbibigay siya ng resulta. Si silent producer is result-oriented. Ito yung tipong hindi bida-bida. Works in a background. Baga, kahit nasa background lang siya, ramdam mo. Alam mo. Na tipong pag-absent siya, mararamdaman mo na absent siya. Kasi hindi dahil sa maingay siya, kundi ramdam mo yung effectivity niya, nawawala. Siya yung pastor's best friend. Mm-hmm. Kasi the pastor finds so much humility in this person. No? Na nare-remind yung pastor to also be humble, nakakahawa, contagious yung humility ni silent producer. No? Kung baga, ang pastor is kind of, you know, is kind of, uh, he, he's a communicator, he communicates everything. No? But si silent producer, since close sila, siya yung nagbabalanse dun sa pastor. Uh, nakikita niya yung attitude 
para maalala ng paso na I am a humble servant. Kasi once minsan na nasa ibaba ko ng pulpito, you tend to be full of yourself. So you need to be reminded. And this kind of people sa church na nagiging kaibigan ng pastor, importante sa mga pastor to. Kasi they encourage the pastor, no? they remind the pastor to be humble sa kanilang ministry. Si silent producer, prayer warrior, yan yung mga tipo nag-lead ng mga prayer gathering, prayer breakfast. This person believe na ang backbone ng ministry ay prayer. So, silent producer, hindi siya yung tipo mananalangin sa harapan ng maraming tao. Hindi papasok sa closet niya at maluluhod at iiyak sa Panginoon. Si silent producer, serbilis. Serbisyong mabilis para sa Panginoon. Not to please the pastor, not to please the church workers, the members, not to please other people, but to please the one through God. Ayan. Kaya nga naman ang uh, uh, paalala ni, ni, ni Paul sa atin. Ano? We need to consecrate our body. Body as, a, as an individual body and also body as a body of Christ. After understanding and experiencing God's mercies, our natural logical response now is to consecrate our bodies to please God with our service and worship. Coming to Jesus does not automatically transform our life. We have a choice to present our bodies daily as in instruments of righteousness. Kaya kung believer ka na, Pwede kang maging EGR, extra-race record, o pwede kang maging mature believer, ninamature ka ng Panginoon. Hindi mo kailangan i-mature yung sarili mo. Hintayin mo ang Panginoon, ask him, siya ang magmamature sa'yo. Magmamature ka kasi yung Panginoon, lagi kayo magkasama, naiintindihan mo siya, nahahawa ka sa attitude ng Lord, sa karakter niya. When you consecrate, present your body and your whole life to God, it is a one-time consecration. But you are to live this consecration daily. No? You need to live this consecration out daily. You represent Christ in, where, in whatever you do and wherever, wherever you go. Your body no longer belongs to you. It belongs to Christ. You mga matured believers, alam nila to Kaya yun yung mga resulta nila. Yung EGR, wag natin sila yung condemn. Nasa process sila. Actually, hindi sila tayo. Kasi may mga points doon na ganun pa rin tayo paminsan-minsan. Pakunti-unti, binabago tayo ng Panginoon papuntang maturity. You are His arms, His hands, His feet, and His voice. Representasyon ka ng Panginoon. Huwag mong kalilimutan yan. Kaya importante mas makita nila si mature believers sa'yo kaysa si EGR believers sa'yo. Before you do anything, ask yourself, would this please Christ? As you, as you live to please Jesus, you will be transformed, no longer conformed to the world system of self-centeredness. So church, aking encouragement sa inyo ngayong gabi, be consecrated. Amen? Make that decision today and live it out daily as a living sacrifice to God. As your daily worship, of course, for when we, the body of Christ, the church, His church, consecrate our bodies to please God, we become contagious. Numbers will follow, obviously. Yan, mga kapatid, brothers and sisters, mga tol. Yun ang gusto ng Panginoon na tawagin niyang His Church. Ang mga members, ang mga believers, ay mga matured believers. Yung mga EGR, extra grace required, hindi tinatapon, believers yun. Ang gusto niya, i-transform ng Panginoon from EGR to matured believers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you Lord God for reminding us some of the characteristics that nag-stick pa rin sa amin, pagiging immature namin. Kaya, you know, people give extra grace para sa amin. 
Lord, ayon na namin sa AGR level. Lord, we're asking that you transform us to be matured Christians, matured believers, to be a great representative of your church, the Romans 12 church, so that people will be attracted to you through us. So people will be, will, will, you know, people will, will know you more. You will reveal yourself through us. At manifest namin sa buhay namin, sa aming pagsasalita, sa aming paggalaw, sa aming pag-iisip. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Sa gabi na to, bless your people. Thank you, Lord God. We pray for also for the COVID-19 to be gone by your power. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. God bless you guys. Maraming maraming salamat. And uh, I'll see you on Sunday. Bye.